Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Block tutorial. Today we're setting up contact with 16 MIDI channels and at least 32 audio outputs. So we're gonna set up contact six with 16 channels of MIDI in and 32 audio outputs. Contact has those aux channels, and so we're gonna have those in there as well. You don't really see people using those, but they're kind of there by default. You can't get around that. If you're not interested in learning how to do it, I will have a link to just download the template. Um, so it'll be a Reaper track template that has uh, 60 MIDI channels, the contact track, and then all the audio outputs. And it's all within a folder, so it's really simple to use. So if you want to get that, there will be a link in the description to just download the template. I will also be adding these templates to my newsletter bundle or my patron bundle, and you can get these plus loads of plugin presets and track templates and custom actions and Reaper-related goodies. And again, link in the description. All right, so let's get started. The empty project, I'm going to right-click, insert virtual instrument on new track. We'll go to contact. The one here without a, a version number, that's the newest, that's contact six. You can see here it has 64 outs. I'm using the VSTi version because it's going to be compatible with Windows and Mac. So just gonna double click, that's going to uh, load the plugin on a new track with it record enabled and monitor enabled. Um, and it's going to ask if we want to build the routing for this track. And we're going to say no, because this is not set up by default correctly. Now we're going into the output section. If you don't see the output section, you go to um, the view menu here at the top, and then outputs, make sure that's enabled, and then click the plus button. We want to set this up for 16 outputs uh, with stereo outputs, and we're going to connect it to the first output. Ascending order assignment means that track two is going to be output three, four. Track three is output five, six. We're going to delete any channels that are here already, and then also make this the default configuration. So because I've done this before, it's going to, this might look a little bit different, but these are the main settings that you need. We're making 16 outputs with two channels each. We're starting on the first output. We're going to um, ascend the output assignments, delete any channels that are already there, and then make this the default. So just click OK. It says output configuration was saved as default. What we usually need to do at this point is tell Reaper and contact that the output configuration has changed. And to do that, you just have to reload the plugin. The easiest way to do that is to right click here on the plugin in the effects chain go to toggle selected effects offline. Hit this button, bring effect online. And now if we run the action to generate the, um, all the outputs, it should work correctly. So right click, build multi-channel routing for output of selected effects. And so 012, 034, this all looks right, and then all these mono outputs are going to be unassigned, and we'll just click yes. Because we can only have 16 channels of MIDI in on a virtual instrument version of Contact, um, there's no need for more outputs than that. Um, in most cases, you may have a, a custom use for that, but uh, for me, I don't. So I'm going to close that. And now we have more tracks than we need. And that is totally fine. We're just going to go to the first track that is unassigned here and just uh, shift click to select all of those. So in this case, it's track 22 to 45. And we'll just delete those tracks. So in Reaper's Mixer, we have the contact track, the track with the plugin, and it has all these sends set up to these other tracks. So um, I'm just going to select these tracks and give them a color. Just gonna right click in an empty, on an area of the track. Go to track color, uh, set tracks to one random color. That works for me. And I'll just show you what this routing looks like and can see how this is such a big time saver to do it this way. You don't have to 
manually assign all of these outputs and uh, set them in here with the different stereo channels for each one. If you're doing this manually, it gets very confusing. We're actually using uh, 40 outputs here. I like to set the track channels to only use the maximum number, which is 40. It doesn't really matter because we're not using um, all the channels that much, but um, if you ever wanted to do a track freeze on just the contact track, uh, making a 40 channel wave file instead of a 64 channel wave file might actually make a difference for um, performance. All these settings are configured correctly, in my opinion. The audio outputs are normal to zero. Um, there's no panning. Everything is pre-fader. All the track channels are correct. So the first output of contact will come up on KTST1. The sixth output will come out on KT Stereo 6. So whatever instrument you have set to output 6 will come up on this track here. So now we'll go back to the contact track and the effects chain. You make sure that the effects chain is open. We can actually close the outputs because we don't need to see that in most cases. You can right click here, build 16 channels of MIDI routing to this track. That's added in another 16 tracks. And these are the tracks that we actually record to. So if we want to record something on the second instrument in contact, we just record enable and monitoring enable this track, which I'll just do right now. Here's monitor enable, we'll just enable all these uh, 16 tracks here. So now I'm gonna assign a color to these, same as I did before, only I have a shortcut for this. So if I want to record onto this contact track, um, if it's the first instrument, I record enable this track. If I want to record on the fourth track, I would record enable. And as you are doing an actual project, you would name these tracks. So contact MIDI one would be like your piano track and, and number three would be your strings track, for example. And just whatever you load in here would be uh, whatever you change the name to. And you would do the same on the outputs. So uh, once again, looking at the routing, all the receives are just uh, MIDI channel inputs um, and they're ascending uh, in order here. This is just the starting point that gets the MIDI in and the audio out for you. That's often one of the most tricky parts of this. And so um, you can use my template or you can build it from scratch the way that I've shown you here. So the only other thing I would do here before uh, saving this as a template is put in one more track. So I'll call this uh, contact template, and I will make it a folder. If we open up the track manager, I often like to hide all of the MIDI channels from the mixer and hide all of the audio outputs from the uh, arrange view. So in the TCP category, we're going to scroll down here and we're going to drag from the first one down to the last one. We're just going to hide those tracks. So in the arrange view, we only have those MIDI channels. In the mixer view, we only have the audio outputs. So we can hide everything. Maybe we'll keep the contact track and the template in both. But yeah, so that's how it would look with the track manager. So to save this, just click on the folder track, right click, uh, save tracks as track template. And I'll just put this in here, contact 6, uh, 16 channels, and save. To use this track template, I just right click. Instead of insert virtual instrument on new track, I'm going to go to insert track from template. And I grab my contact 16 channels. And that loads up exactly as it was before with all of the MIDI and audio tracks in there. All right, and so I will do the same thing for the uh, contact five. And so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I have a few more videos on contact related things, uh, one on building a, a simple instrument and another video on doing the batch resave, which uh, speeds up loading of contact instruments. So if you're interested in those, there will be links down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.